person is making sharp decisions, either, so a sharp decision will be a distribution which will be like a bowl, right? So there'll be a lot of fives and a lot of ones, but very few in two, three, four. So does anyone have data where the person is very clear? No one? sharp decisions or not, right? My, 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 my intuition would be that kids will be making more sharp decisions than adults, right? But we can look at that at data and try to see because we have data now today for both adults and non adults. Okay, so this is the first graph which we make. Now the second thing, for doing the second thing, you know, so we have these variables which are five, four, three, two, one, right? But to simplify this problem into, we want to simplify this problem into a classification problem, right? which has just two labels. So what we'll say is that looking at your data, either you can say that if the person is rated five, or five and four, five or four, he's in, he or she is in the friend category, and if he is rated three to one, then it's in a not friend category. Now if you have very few five or fours, then you can say five, four, and three is in the friends category, and two and one are in the not friends category. Now based on this, allocate people as friends or not friends, and then we start filling this data right here, that within the friends category, how many were males and how many were females, right? How many had an old name and how many had a new name? And how many were playing outdoor games and how many were playing indoor games? Got it? So let me try to do this with for you guys here. So what I do is I go back to the rating and I choose three and four. So I get 20 records for three and four. So this is my people who I want to friend. Now I count how many males are there in this. So eight males out of 20. So 
remove that E, this becomes yellow. Sorry, this becomes gray. Then I do the same for the neck, which is, sorry. Okay, so who all have been able to fill these counts right here? Counts for how many friends are male, females, how many friends are old name, new name? Okay. friends category there's 60% males and 
so 40% males and 60% females, right? Now, remember, the way, this, uh, the way this data has been built, in the total data, there are equal numbers of males and females, right? So the 32 entries we have, we have equal number of males and females. So if the friend category, we have to just see the deviation from a 50% 50, 50 uh, 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 from a 50-50 split, right? If, if that was not the case, we would have to have to look at both the friends category and the not friends category. Why we have been able to do the simplification of only looking at the friends class and seeing how many people are males and females is because we know in that in the total data set there are equal number of males and females and we are seeing that in the friends class are there more males than females, right? And what we find is that yes, for this person there are more females than males in the friend category. But if you see the other two variables, there's hardly any difference, right? So what do we learn here? What do we learn here? That there's not much of a trend. None of these three features come out as strongly differentiating features for this person, right? So really, if you look at the data of this person, whether the person was a male or a female, had an old name or a new name, played outdoor games or indoor games, made no difference to his or her decision to make the person a friend or not, we see a slight correlation with males and females, right? So it seems that the person made females friends more often than males. I'm not disclosing who's the person, so there's no joke here. There's a slight, it's not, I'm not even sure whether it's statistically significant, right? But here I have data from another person. Let me put this data here. Clearly, if you again see, there's no difference with male, female, old name, new name, but there's a clear difference on outdoor games or indoor games. So within the persons, people who this guy has friended, like would like to friend, 78% are people who like outdoor games, right? So the differentiating feature for this person is definitely outdoor games. On the same page? So now if I can just run through on each table and tell me what is the dif whether you have a differentiating person feature for the data you choose for the person you worked on and what was that feature. So if I start from this table, do you have all the numbers? Do you have all these numbers as yet? So do you have a feature, what are your numbers? How many males, females? Percentages. Oh, they're not filled in? Anyone on this table was filled in? Okay, let's see his numbers. Okay, so within 13 friends, old names is how many? Three. Old names is three and new names is 10. Is that the result? A positive. So old names are 10 and new names is three. And what about uh, males and females? Oh, you're still filling it. Okay, so definitely he has that as the distinguishing feature. You, can you tell me how many male, female percentages? Okay, 20%, 11 are male, 9 are female, no dif differentiation. Again, old name, new name, no differentiation. So outdoor games are 16 and indoor games are 4. So again, the, the hobby is definitely a discriminating feature a strongly differentiating feature for this person. Any other table who has a number to share? Just, we'll just do one more table right now. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. How many to new? 10 and two, old are 10 and new are two. Okay. but not very significant difference.